Okay, good evening. We have a full house tonight, and my apologies for running a little bit late. Um, welcome, everyone, to the June 5th Board of Education meeting. I would like to call this meeting officially to order. Um, and we will begin with um, an invocation, Mr. Sides. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd like to introduce the Reverend Vic Weaver for tonight's invocation. Father God, we come to you in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, and we just thank you for the chance that we have tonight to come and meet and to discuss issues that are very important to our students, our faculty, our staff, and our community. We ask that you would just bless us tonight Give us wisdom. Give us what we need tonight to make the decisions that will forward this program of education in Union County. And we just thank you for what you're doing, and we ask it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if everyone would please stand. We are going to have the Pledge of Allegiance, and tonight we will be led by student Lawson Rink from <clears throat> Union County Early College. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, board, we will now have approval of the agenda. I have a couple proposed changes to the agenda. I'd like to pull off of the consent gen agenda 11H, proposed county tower at Rayview Elementary, and put that into the regular agenda. And I would also like to pull off uh, 11L, surplus materials, and put that into the regular agenda. And I would like to add to the consent agenda the Piedmont High School bond CIP project bids. Madam Chairman, I would like to pull 11B, gift, gifts and donations off. Mrs. Hightail, I apologize. I did not have a correct agenda in front of me. Can you give me those which alphabets uh, you refer to? I again? hope I have a correct agenda in front of me. Sorry. Um, well, I print them off. Of okay. Can, okay, sorry. let's see. H and L, that's all H, I need. H. Thank okay, you. Okay, so I want H and L pulled off, and I want to add then an one to the consent agenda, which is the Piedmont High School bond CIP project bids, which everybody got a copy of. And was approved by the facilities committee. And Mr. Ray. B, 11B. B, so we're, B, we're pulling B, H, and L. And then adding one. We also need to add the sales tax. It, it's going to be included in the J, which will now include the PMOT one as well, because it, it was already there to include okay, what uh, we, what Western we will Union do and is we will, um, that's what's confused me, is the policies. Policies is confusing me. And then add Piedmont. We will do that. You want to just do that um, directly after consent before the superintendent's report. We'll do cover all of those. B H and L. Perfect. And the and the Piedmont. Well, Piedmont's going to be part of the consent agenda. Oh, you're adding that to. Yes, consent. I'm adding okay. that to consent. P 
Piedmont High School. That can be B, B. Put that as B. Piedmont High School. Bond. Bond slash CIP project bids. Okay. Very good. Okay, are there any other changes to the agenda? Okay. So we're going to do 11, part one is the consent agenda, mm -hmm. and part two will be the things that are pulled from the consent agenda. Correct. We'll do that before the superintendent's report. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Board members, if you will please come around. We will now have the John H. Crowder Service Award presented by Ms. Leslie Boyd. Each month, we recognize a high school student with the John H. Crowder Service Award for Community Service. This award is a living tribute to the late John H. Crowder, who spent more than 30 years serving the children of Union County. In order to receive this award, students must not only be academically successful, but also have an established history of community service in more than one area or with more than one organization. I'd like to start our special recognitions this evening by honoring Porter Ridge High Senior Luke Dillard, our May 2018 John H. Crowder Service Award recipient, who was unable to attend last month's board meeting due to his participation in playoff tennis match that evening. Luke, will you please come forward? You can see him right there if you want. Yeah. During the past four years, Luke has served his school and community in a variety of ways. As president of the Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, he has completed more than 30 hours of tutoring for students at Porter Ridge Middle and High and has helped at various blood drives, field days, and more. Luke has also participated in two mission trips to Seaverville, Tennessee, where he dedicated 80 hours to work on beautification projects for local schools and churches, visiting a local boys and girls club, and implementing a vacation Bible school program for a nearby housing complex. The Board of Education is very proud to recognize Luke Dillard as the May 2018 recipient of the John H. Service, Service Award. Congratulations, Luke. Okay, tonight we are also pleased to award the John H. Crowder Service Award for June 2018 to a very special student at Sun Valley High. Will Krista Bryan please come forward? Krista has an impressive 4.64 GPA. <laughs> and has participated in honors and advanced placement courses throughout her time in high school. She is also very involved in her school's Navy JROTC unit, as well as the Beta Club and National Honor Society. Throughout the past several years, Krista has volunteered with organizations that include Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child, Relay for Life, Adopt a Highway, Veterans Monthly Coffee Events, Crisis Assistance Ministry, and more. She also volunteers with food drives and outreach missions, serves as a reading buddy at Shiloh Elementary, and has been a peer tutor all four years of high school. The Board of Education is very proud to recognize Krista Bryan as the June 2018th recipient of the John H. Crowder Service Award. Congratulations. Yeah. It's always hard to follow up on those, isn't it? <laughs> Tonight, the Union County Public Schools Employee of the Month Award recognizes employees in a non-teacher, non-certified position. It was created to honor those who have exemplary work and performance 
those who promote positive morale, or possibly those who demonstrate initiatives and creativity that improve the operating effects of their department or district. Individuals can be nominated based on their performance, their customer service, or an individual incident that merits commendation. Our June recipient is Jerome Sutton, the crossing guard at Sun Valley Middle School. Sun Valley Middle School principal Vicki Merritt will now come forward to introduce our recipient. Mr. Jerome Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> has been the Sun Valley Middle School crossing guard for over 20 years. During both the morning and afternoon rush hours, speed and congestion play a major factor in the sense of urgency of the alertness and readiness of an exceptional crossing guard like Mr. Jerome. Many students also look up to Mr. Jerome as an advocate and mentor. Mr. Jerome goes above and beyond by dressing as Santa each year <laughs> For the Wingate Elementary students' support of the Sun Valley Middle School Beta Club, he even dresses up for special holidays while on duty to bring a smile to the faces of local commuters and the student body. Additionally, he starts and ends his day in the front office to offer everyone a pleasant greeting. Mr. Jerome has been recognized by the mayor of Indian Trail with a key to the city for his service, he has also been in the Charlotte Observer, Inquirer Journal, Indian Trail Trader, and in the SVMS yearbook. Mr. Jerome, for the year of 2018, was one of the top three of America's favorite crossing guards. <laughs> We will never be able to recognize him enough for the work that he humbly does. He will always be our number one. I will now read the Employee of the Month proclamation from the Board of Education and Dr. Houlihan. Whereas the Union County Board of Education values the hard work of each employee within the district, whereas performance is an essential part of the district operations, whereas Jerome Sutton exemplifies the performance, dedication, and teamwork essential to the success of the district and its students. Now, therefore, we the Board of Education for Union County Public Schools and Dr. Andrew G. Houlihan, Superintendent, hereby proclaim Jerome Sutton as the Employee of the Month for June. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a legend. I'll tell you, I was principal at Sun Valley Middle for three years. He, he, I learned a lot from, from Jerome, fantastic person. Tonight, we'd also like to recognize some outstanding students and programs in our school district. First, we have the M3 Challenge team from Marvin Ridge High School, which includes seniors Daniel Haller, Andrew Claxton, Tyler Bolo, Janeth Patel, and George Reteb. As part of the National MathWorks Modeling Challenge, these students had only 14 hours to come up with a solution to a real world issue, food insecurity in the United States. The Marvin Ridge M3 Challenge team solution not only beat more than 900 solutions submitted by students across the United States, but they were also one of only five teams to attend the finals competition in New York City. Ultimately, they placed first runner-up and received $15,000 in prize money. Congratulations to the Marvin Ridge High M3 Challenge Team.
I'm also pleased to recognize two of our Air Force JROTC units who have recently earned the prestigious Distinguished Units Award. This award recognizes the personal growth and accomplishments of the unit's cadets, contributions of the instructors as mentors, and the support of the school system and the local community. There are more than 890 Air Force JROTC units in the world, and Parkwood High and Monroe High are two of only 276 Air Force JROTC units to earn this distinction. Congratulations to Monroe High JROTC instructors, Major Forrest Jackson and Master Chief O'Neill Knowlton, Parkwood High JROTC instructors, Lieutenant Eric Kelly, and Senior Master Sergeant William Reed, as well as all of the Parkwood and Monroe High JROTC cadets. Let's congratulate them at this time. Good evening, board. Uh, tonight we are here to recognize a number of teams and athletes who have gone on to become state champions. First, we have the Forest Hills High state champions in track. Will Coach Harold Crowder please come forward to recognize his state champions? Good afternoon. My name is Coach Harold Crowder. Uh, I'm the uh, Forest Hills uh, outdoor uh, boy, men, young men uh, track coach. <laughs> uh, I first like to introduce uh, our state 2A uh, boys uh, championship team, uh, starting with uh, Keyshawn Tyson. Jaleel McLaughlin, Quentin Huntley, Jalen Pope, Scott McClendon, also I want to introduce my coaches, uh, uh, Kevin Feaster, uh, Mary, Mary and Bruce, and Thomas Cooper. We also had uh, individual uh, state champions. Uh, Scott, Mc Scott McClendon was uh, named uh, Boys uh, Track Most Outstanding Performer in the State 2A Meet. And our four by one relay team, which consists of Jadis Davis, uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, uh, Quentin Huntley, and Scott McClendon, with Keyshawn Tyson as a alternate. Uh, they won the state four by one relay team. Uh, also, we won the four by two uh, relay. Uh, it consists of Jadis Davis, uh, Quentin Huntley, Keyshawn Tyson, Jaleel McLaughlin with uh, Jalen Polk as our alternate. And Scott McClendon also won uh, individual uh, long jump and triple jump.
Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Britton Short. I'm the head men's lacrosse coach at Waddington High School. Um, a couple weeks ago, we won the 1A, 2A, 3A state championship, beating East Chapel Hill 20 to 6. Uh, we also had two individuals um, that were awarded. Patrick Burke was given a sportsmanship award before the game started uh, for the course of the season. He was a senior. And uh, our sophomore, AJ Todaro, Anthony Todaro, uh, was awarded MVP of the game. Um, scoring 11 points with eight goals and three assists. Uh, so it was a really, really big, uh, really big win for us and a big award for him and both Patrick too. Um, unfortunately, Anthony and Patrick couldn't make it here tonight due to prior uh, prior engagements. But I'd also like to give a really big thank you to my administration, uh, Dr. Jay Jones and my athletic director, Michael Hart, um, for all the support they gave me this year as my first season um, as a varsity coach. And uh, Looking forward to the next few years and, and what we're building over at Waddington and uh, appreciate y'all's time tonight. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> New to me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick Spencer. I am the uh, head coach for Weddington Cross Country and Track, and I wanted to congratulate our boys for winning the 2018 3A state title this year in outdoor track, indoor track, and last year also in outdoor track. Uh, I wanted to call out some of the guys that did participate this year at the state meet. Uh, those are Emerson Dowds, Doug Draken, Caleb Dixon, Dennison Livingston, Ian Williams, Brock Peeler, Matthew Eberhard, Will Mazur, Jake Toomey, Kyle Durham, Jackson O'Hara, Stephen Larson, Mitchell Wolverton, and James Schmidt. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Coach Mike Schnee, an assistant uh, track and field coach with Weddington High School. Um, been coaching them uh, for, this is my fourth year. Uh, let's see. I'm also very proud to recognize Riley Feltz, the 3A girls pole vault state champion. Congratulations, Riley. <laughs> Coach Allen, the head track and field coach over at Cuthbertson High School, also here with Coach Elliot Lightfoot, who coaches our sprinters. Tonight, I'm proud to recognize an outstanding athlete, Dahlia Cutler, who won the girls' 400-meter dash at the 3A state championship. Congratulations, Dahlia. Hi, I'm John Tillman. I'm head track coach at Parkwood High School. I, I thought that was for me. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to congratulate Anna Bristol, who won the girls' 3,200 meters at the state championships, 3A. Good evening, board members. I'm Coach Tim Beckham with Port Ridge High School Track and Field. Um, tonight, I'd like to recognize Jalen Coleman, the 4A Boys 100 meter dash state champion. Congratulations, Jalen.
we decided to let the students go first. I know they were all concerned out there about their studying for their testing tomorrow. So, all right. Uh, each year we honor the teachers. We did our teachers of the year last year, uh, last month. But each year we honor a teacher who exemplifies the very best of the teaching profession. A teacher who not only dedicated, who is dedicated and highly skilled, but also inspires students of all backgrounds and abilities to learn. Tonight, I am honored to recognize Ashley Erb, our 2018-19 Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Ashley began her teaching career at Western Union Elementary in 2014. In her classroom, she strives to maintain a positive community by creating a place where students learn to collaborate and function in society while also obtaining the necessary academic skills to prepare for a more civil, progressive, and innovative future. Additionally, her goal for each student is to look back on their time in her class and use their skills they've gained to care for others. Now you're supposed to wait till I get done before you get up. Uh, the UCPS Teacher Assistant of the Year honors an outstanding teacher assistant who not only dedicated to their students, but also works tirelessly to assist the teachers in a variety of ways in the classroom. I am honored to recognize Teacher Assistant of the Year, Gina Warner. Gina was recognized for constantly looking for ways to improve her skill set, and she was praised for her willingness to help her peers and students in any situation. In addition to having an unwavering passion for education, Gina has also been an advocate for the role of teacher assistants by attending district meetings, rallies, and the North Carolina Associated Teacher Assistants for several years. Congratulations, Gina. I would also like to recognize some of our outstanding staff members who were recently recognized by the Union County Association of Educational Office Professionals at the, uh, at the organization's 40th Annual Administrative Banquet. Jenny Webb, the UCPS Director of Exceptional Children's Programs, was named as the UCAEOP Administrator of the Year. She was recognized not only for her longstanding support of special education, but for also greatly influencing other professionals with her extensive knowledge. She was also praised for her professionalism, her leadership, her compassion, and her commitment to professional growth. Congratulations, Ms. Webb, Dr. Webb. <laughs> and our Weddington Elementary bookkeeper, Dawn Davis, was also named the UCA EOP Educational Office Professional of the Year. Dawn was what described as being extremely efficient, hardworking, and honest, as well as a team player who is highly respected among her colleagues. She also recognized for her positive attitude and willingness to exhaust all avenues to ensure students, staff, and families receive the exceptional attention they deserve. Congratulations, Don. <laughs> Board members, this concludes our recognitions for this evening. Okay, we will now move to public comments. 30 minutes has been allotted for public comments. Community members wishing to speak during public comments should state their name, address, and phone number prior to making any other comments. The board will not hear in open session complaints about the performance of school personnel, personnel issues, or confidential student matters. Individuals may address the board for a maximum of three minutes. Any person who is appointed representative for a group may address the board for five minutes. Should a community member wish to seek information or share items that may not be shared during public comments, our staff are available to address your concerns or provide information. Dr. Charles Faust, Chief School Performance Officer is available. 
Dr. Chris Barnes, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, and Dr. John Jones, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning are here to assist. The first speaker tonight will be Jeanette Lockhart. Good afternoon to all of you. It's an honor to be here once again. I want to share this platform with this young gentleman, this rising star. He has a voice and I would like for you all to hear it. If you would give them your name, what school you attend and what grade you are, and just say from your heart. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Donovan Johnson, and I'm from Monroe Middle School, and I'm in the sixth grade. I, I, I want to be an architect when I grow up or as an adult, but it, but it's just some days I I feel like I'm being prevented from them, uh, being prevented from my from my dream of being an architect. Tell them just what you told me. What? Tell them what you want to do. You want to do it. You want to accomplish your goals and your dreams. And plus, I want to accomplish my goals and dreams as well. And I'm looking forward to passing my grades. That's all my goal is, and I don't want any trouble trouble with this. I. How do you get there? I don't know. How do I get there? Tell them what you told me. Okay, I'm going to go back to medical society. How did you get there? You won't help. Get it. That's okay. I can do it. Okay. I can do this. Okay. Just tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for entertaining a child. I want to talk about the right direction. Um, I approached the board in 2015. Uh, at the present time, I was working at NC Works, Careers and Works. I also worked for SPCC. I did career training. I also did job training. The reason why I approached the board is because I realized as a community is born here, raised here. They're invested into the community, have a lot of love and passion for children. I'm from a family who shares those same views. We just believe that there's something that still that we can do to help children to rise to the goals and their dreams. It was evident in seeing them as alumni from Union County School that there was still work to be done. As an advocate for children, I receive many calls from parents just say we're having problems. Donovan is here with his grandmother. His father and his grandmother raised him from birth. When he spoke to me and when I received a call, I was so excited about a young man who could so well articulate what he feels. Very reverse. He's a little shy here tonight. He's still a child. But I realized that this child wanted to be a well-rounded, productive member of society. He wanted to go to school. He wanted to just apply himself to do what he needed to do to make that become a reality but he's having trouble. John then asked me, he says, his grandmother, when will somebody come to help me? When is that lady coming to help me? Because he's having a difficult time reaching his dream. Sometimes when there are roadblocks, sometimes we need, as adults, we know that we need to seek a different alternative. And that's why John Donovan is here along with his grandmother. Also here sitting in the audience is some of the other people that call out to us because they also are sharing some issues and they have done everything right as parents to help their children do right, to apply themselves, to do what is needed, to reach their goals and their dreams. They need help. I'm not here as I stated before to point fingers to ridicule anybody. This is an extended a branch that I want to extend out to you tonight. Please help us 
to help the children in the community to reach their goals and reach their dreams. Please alleviate some of the tears and the worries and the concerns of the parents, of the guardians, of the grandparents, of these children. They only want them to go to school and get a fair education. They want them to do well. They know that they're our future, but they're having roadblocks, too many roadblocks, and we're here to ask for your help. Thank you. We will now have Linda Davis. Good evening, Board of Ed, Ms. Morrell, and Dr. Houlihan. My name is Linda Davis. My address is 7015 Winsong Way, Wingate, North Carolina. I am a teacher at Marshfield Elementary. I've been there since 1995. But today I'm here for a different reason. Uh, my, uh, I am the local president of Union County NCAE. And I'm speaking on behalf of the members of Union County NCAE and many educators throughout Union County Public Schools. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the Board of Ed, Dr. Hudelhan, Dr. Burns, and the administration for helping us to establish a platform to allow Union County educators a chance to speak out on the legislative agenda that we would like to push along with Union County. Some of the things that Union County, along Union County NCAE and Union County Board of Ed know the type of things that we need as a county to make our kids successful. And there's a lot of issues that concerns us because um, funding, funded per pupil spending, reasonable testing practices for public school kids, being an, I'm a first grade teacher, so I did not get a chance to ex experience all that great test taking thing they did this past week. But I know those children were stressed out. The school was the quietest I have ever heard. When is any time that a school supposed to be that quiet, that so kids are in roles not able to share with their colleagues? That's what we do. Every day we teach our kids to rely on someone next to you. Teachers can't always get through to the children. They have their peer peers to help them, but not this week. You couldn't go to the bathroom. You couldn't do anything. The teachers couldn't even go in the hallways. As a first grade teacher, I was confined to my classroom for a long time this week, but that's a different story. My thing today is to thank you guys for allowing us that platform on May, for, on May 14th. That's something you didn't have to do, but you guys allowed me and the PAC uh, chairperson to come and speak with our legislators. Thank you. Once again, thank you. And I am looking forward to working with you. Ms. Morrell, I have your number, you have mine. We will be working together next year. Dr. Hulaham, I'm looking forward to meeting you too. We will, I will be in that office. Once again, thank you guys so much. It shows that you care about us and we do care about Union County Public Schools. Once again, thank you. Our last speaker is Gil Spears. Good evening. My name is Gil Spears. My address is 14325 Northridge Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28269. My phone number is 704-906-3481. I'm a teacher at Sun Valley Middle School in Indian Trail. I'm also an association representative for the Union County chapter of NCAE. I'm here today as representative of NCAE to announce our 2018 scholarship recipient. Union County NCAE in collaboration with the retired school personnel of Union County NCAE is pleased to announce Christina Whitley as our 2018 scholarship recipient. Christina is a graduating senior at Forest Hills High School and will enter East Carolina University in the fall where she will major in history education. Christina is the daughter of Jennifer and Chad Whitley. Congratulations to Christina. We look forward to her joining the teaching profession. Thank you.
That concludes public comments. We will now have um, highlights from the advanced ed accreditation update. Um, I'll turn it over to Dr. John Jones. Good evening again, board members and Dr. Houlihan would like to provide this evening some preliminary results that we have already from advanced ed from our visit of our engagement that took place April 15th through the 18th. We have received a preliminary report and wanted to share some of the findings that have been shared to the, us. We do expect a full uh, report once it's approved out of the advanced ed office in Atlanta, but wanted to give you just some information. As you recall, our accreditation visit process takes a total of five years to cycle through. In April 15th, we had our engagement review team that visited with us. Uh, four of the 10 members were from North Carolina and six were from out of state. And the review consisted of district as well as school visits and interviews. And four of our board members also had a chance to participate in the interviews as well. Observations of the learning environment, they visited 20 schools and the use of a standard-based assessment with the advanced ed standards uh, in rating our district. <clears throat> Note that over the three-day visitation, the team members, including the four board members who were visited, uh, meet, met with all stakeholder groups with Union County Public Schools, and they keep a tally of that. Note that 202 instructional staff members, mostly teachers, were interviewed within the three days, and we had 138 students participate. 29 parent and community members were able to participate, including our partnerships with College Board, South Piedmont Community College, and Huntington Learning Center, to a total of 491 points of reference that the team had a chance to interview over the three days. When looking at the diagnostic that was used, the engagement team looked at three areas, leadership capacity, learning capacity, and resource capacity. 31 standards were brought in and used to a rate Union County Public Schools. And they rated each of those after all of the interviews, the visitations to the, 30 school, to the 20 schools, and interviews on Monday with district and staff members. The ratings are rated, as you see, all the way from needs improvement to exceeds expectations, each of those standards. As it, we have received it tonight for, the, for this visit, only three areas were noted as emerging. That's areas that we want to extend, focus upon. There were no standards noted as needs improvement, meeting expectation nine and exceeding expectation 19. 90% of the standards in Union County Public Schools either met or exceeded the advanced ed standards that we had. The areas that we did note from the diagnostic that we will focus upon will be continuing to work with meaningful data as a tool, equipping all learning for students, and again, the word all, all, and looking at equity, equity, as well as equal opportunity, a culture of collaboration and teaching and creative programming, and furthering our work in supporting students for their future. Those are the areas from the standards that we will be drilling down and working upon. If you put it in a pie chart, the blue or the green area is what we'd wanna see. And again, that represents 90%. There were three powerful practices at the end that the team noted with Union County Public Schools. The first, they really like the strategic plan, folks. A lot of the interviews all the way from teachers to administrators, to our board members, our central office, showed that there was a pathway of direction provided from your strategic plan that you have provided and that the efforts are aligned. They also liked the fact that the board, they call it the governing body, that the governing body and the superintendent is engaged with the community. They noted not only in your own districts and county, 
as well as the superintendent who noted over a hundred presentations made engagement with our county, but also what we've done with social media and communication. They were impressed with the communication platform and they did use the word transparency in the report. So that was one of the powerful practices, a lot to be proud of with already the, the progress of the uh, strategic plan. The second one would be using data in making decisions particularly looking more at formative assessment and benchmark assessment. This was an area of improvement for us five years ago, and it now moves to a powerful practice. But we know we want to do more in that area. And finally, the third one is looking at the process of how we are mentoring, how we are recruiting teachers, the processes of creative interviewing, as well as mentoring or looking at workshops and support, recruiting, things like job fairs, things that we're doing to attract candidates. That was noted as a powerful practice. Two areas noted for improvement, and in case say five years ago, we had four. So we have two areas of improvement that we focus. The first one is focusing upon all students. And you will see in the advanced ed standards is they use the word all. They will ask, are we talking about all students? And the first opportunity improvement talks about, do we have access for our programs for all students? And are we making sure that we're exposing career goals and plans for the future for all students? That will be a goal that we will continue. One example of what they saw, progress example of what we're doing at Monroe Middle School and focusing on our health sciences work, how we're going to make sure that not only we expose that sort of curricula for just Monroe Middle, but how about all of our students or looking at our academies or looking at our programs. So all students would be that first piece. And the second piece, program evaluation. And this really aligns with a lot of what Dr. Houlihan talks to us about as leaders is how we evaluate what we're doing. In particular, they say they've seen, they have seen improvement in the school improvement process, but are we really making sure at the end of the school improvement process, we're asking schools to show what was your progress? What were the goals met? What did you not meet? And then where are you headed? So that whole cycle, I guess, of plan, do, study, act, and looking at how we monitor that. So looking at support of academic programs. Those were two areas for improvement. Then there is one giant improvement priority that we have. And really this is set for is basically how Union County can, quote, go to the next level. And this aligns with tier one instruction and what we're seeing with instruction in our classrooms. The teams visited, and I think they saw pockets of highly effective instruction, and they saw opportunities of how we can use technology, how we can approach good teaching, collaborative learning, problem-based learning, how we can expand upon that. That is an opportunity that we have. This comes at a good time because this summer, our administrators will be working in summer leadership training in a couple of weeks. And I sent you the dates you're invited to, to come and attend out at Marvin Ridge High School. We're going to be focusing up at Cuthbertson High School, excuse me. We're gonna be focusing upon that tier one instruction and what we can do to be empowered learners. So you will hear a lot about that. So this affirms our work and the direction Dr. Houlihan and the leadership has for supporting our teachers. So that was one big area. Uh, under Elliott ratings, and Elliott is basically what they saw in the classrooms when they spent one full day visiting, uh, each member visited two schools. They saw well-managed learning environments, they saw supportive classrooms, and they saw equitable learning environments. They saw very healthy classrooms. Areas to improve upon, though, is how we are building our digital learning environment, how we're really making technology affect learning, and how the learner uses information, and we foster that as teachers and educators. That active learning environment and progress monitoring and feedback. Those to the right are areas that actually they saw and made suggestions. So if you look at the leadership capacity, learning capacity and resource capacity and the standards we were going to be measured again, again, are basically what they call our EQ number or our healthy number rates at 90%. That's very high considering these standards were new. 
we got we were one of the first ones to run with these standards this year. We're always somehow in our five year cycle is when they make changes. So we anticipate from advance said that we will receive accreditation granted for 2018 to 2023 and it'll be a part of continuous support. And we thank you very much for your support and the progress in allowing us to do what we do with our students and making Union County a great place. Next steps, this will explain how we'll continue with that process and what we'll do to continue. Any questions? Yes, sir. What does Elliot stand for? Elliot is the, it is the term for the tool that they use when they visit classrooms, when they actually went into the classrooms. It's just a tool, a walkthrough tool, what they call. So it's the instrument that they use that rated and found what they felt was strong and what they found was were areas that we could improve upon. It's an advanced ed tool. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Jones, I, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Board of Education for all of the hard work you and your team did um, to ensure that um, we had a great presentation when um, many, many different people from, from this accreditation board flew in to the area, I believe on Sunday or yes, over the weekend, and, and then several days of different places that you needed to get everyone um, to these 20 different schools for tours and everything. But... Um, to see this come back with such positive information about our school district tonight, I want to say thank you for all of your hard work and for pulling us all in together and, and um, showing, highlighting how strong Union County Public Schools is. So thank you very much. You are welcome. It was a pleasure to showcase the school system. And I am going to provide you a, a detailed overview at this time, a, a summary of this. That um, thank you. Okay, good news. We will now have um, approval of open session meeting minutes from April and May. I make a motion to approve the April 24th, April 26th, May 1st, and May 10th meeting minutes. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Thank you, Mrs. Hindhill. Okay, we will now have the consent agenda approval except for B, H, and L. Make a motion. We oh, yeah. we replaced um, B with the Piedmont High School Bond CIP, so just make a note of that, board members. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, and we will um, do first um, gifts and donations for approval. Okay, board members, the reason I keep pulling this off, over a year ago, we were told by Dr. Houlihan that this was part of a memorandum of understanding that would be paid for by CMC Union. And uh, when I, I kept want, waiting for it to come through, and three months ago, I pulled it off, and Dr. Houlihan said he believed it had already been done, but we couldn't find it. Uh, last month, I pulled it off, and he said it was in process. And this month, I did some checking. It's not on the memorandum of understanding. And there's schools in the county that are having to put up their own signs. Booster clubs are having to build them. And, and I would really like to know what is the, the facts on that sign that we were told would be paid for? I, I believe I, I, I said that the sign is an example of that partnership that we could explore. And so in a conversation I've had over email with, with Mr. Lutz, and it took him some time, I think he was traveling. Um, we've reviewed the MOU. The MOU specifically talks about signage that is their logo and their paint scheme. Um, we have been working with Mr. Covington to get a payment from them because there are, um, charges from last year that they have said to us in the thousands of dollars that they will be issuing a check to us when that check comes in it will come back to this board on on this agenda item but there is some debate about the actual marquee because the marquee doesn't include 
um, the logo and the actual paint scheme. And I'm still trying to work through that with them to come to a resolution. But this board should expect as soon as the check comes in, um, Mr. Covington has been in contact with them on that payment. And I can't remember the total amount, but it is in the thousands of dollars that they've agreed to, to submit to the school system. Um, this is a the partnership effort with Monroe Middle School and Carolina's Healthcare, now Atrium. Um, and so, you know, as part of your first year of this relationship, these are some of the things we try to work through. But um, we will be coming back to the board with that with that donation. Okay, well, I'm kind of like Jerry McGuire. I want to see the money. Okay, we will now have the proposed county tower at Rayview Elementary. This is an item just so everybody understands it came through facilities, but we wanted the whole board to hear about this before to make a decision and that's why it's coming up separately. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hintel. So at the, our facilities committee meeting, we um, looked over a request from uh, emergency services uh, via letter with Curtis Teague. They are requesting the placement of a public safety radio tower at Rayview Elementary School on our property. It will provide uh, improved reception for law enforcement, firefighters, emergency medical personnel. The area won't interfere with our school operations. Um, uh, the proposed tower is roughly three to 380 feet tall. It will be in an area about 100 by 100 square feet. Uh, with no guy wires. Mr. Teague is actually here tonight in case you all have some very specific questions, but um, that is what we are wanting to do uh, to help support them at Rayview Elementary School. I have a question for Mr. Teague. Okay. Mr. Teague, there's already a cell phone tower on 16 within one mile as the crow flies of Rayview property. Why? And it's at a higher elevation. Mm -hmm. Why would we not look at that as a county? Because I know this is going to cost us a lot of money. Why would we not put that, that antenna on that existing tower instead of putting one from scratch on a Okay, to try to explain, usually whenever you're looking at cell phone towers, usually they're, they're calculated, they're built to carry a certain amount of weight. And I, I don't know if the one that you're talking about is a monopole. Is, it's if a it cross. Looks like a, it's a cross. Okay, very, very good. Um, basically, whenever you look at those, they may already be engineered. And whenever we are talking about the public safety radio system, we're not just talking about putting one antenna or even two antennas. It's multiple antennas, and it, those antennas have to be spaced depending on the frequency and if it is a transmit or a receive. So we run into some situations like that, and it's easier for us, especially in this particular area, to build one from scratch to where we, quite honestly, can get the highest point possible. And if I can, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the background. We're not just looking at the Ray Road area. We've identified a couple areas in the county, uh, in the Waxhaw area, as well as the Ray Road area, where we're having severe problems with transmissions. We're actually proposing looking at two different tower sites, both of which would be constructed. One happens to be on school property, which is very close to Ray Road, of course, with this location. But it also is at an elevation that worked for us whenever we were doing our evaluation. The other is um, on Sims Road, and it's actually on county-owned property. But again, the elevation worked. And whenever you start dealing with this, um, one thing that we have to do, we have to look at the amount of coverage from each individual tower because they all mesh over one another. So it's critical as to where we're able to put the towers for the best possible coverage. Whenever we were looking, we were looking at county-owned property or based on previous um, 
experience, we do have a couple of towers that are on school property, so we also included school property. But we looked at that. We also preferred an area where we had county zoning. And whenever we looked at those uh, situations, especially the railroad area that we were looking at in particular, this location proved um, very workable for us within the area. And it was backed up by the calculations that were made by Motorola, who is our vendor. What will that tower cost the county? <laughs> that tower, that tower is approximately two million dollars. I would think that the cell phone companies are located in the best location, but that's all I can say. I'll I understand. Generally, usually our towers are a little taller than most of theirs. I got a question. You said it was three hundred feet. How high was it? Yeah. 350 to 380 and to try to explain that for instance if it's a 350 foot tower you will have an antenna at yeah. the taller uh at the uppermost section of the tower that extends above the top of the tower okay. that's why i say up to 380. And i didn't ask this at the facilities committee meeting is it 350 feet away from school um i do not really know how far it is away from the school it's probably over 300 feet because it's in the wooded area forward from the school. So I would assume it's it's further. But also, just for clarification, uh, these towers are designed that if they begin to fail, they fall in on top of yeah. the tower. So you don't have a situation where they lean out mm -hmm. and you have a um, collapse equal to the height of, of the tower. No more questions. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This came out of facilities as unanimous vote, so I move to uh, to uh, to approve the request for the tower on the Rayview property. And it does not require a second. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. One opposed. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, I was going to do these at the end, but um, Michelle Morris has advised us that we should go back and now vote on gifts and donations. Um, let's, I will accept a motion to approve the gifts and donations from the board. As, so moved. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. And that brings us to uh, sur surplus materials. So at our uh, at a prior facilities committee meeting, we had uh, asked the uh, facilities committee to allow us to begin the process of surplusing mobile units throughout the district, of which we have many. So our first phase was to uh, identify the mobile units that we did not need and the schools where we did not need them. We came up with a total of 49 units. We've also um, talked with the principals at those affected schools to verify that what we were thinking and what we were looking at in terms of population student enrollment projections were going to match. Um, after having done that, uh, Porter Ridge Middle School has asked us to hold off a little bit on the mobile units that we had planned to take uh, from their campus. Um, they are asking us to leave four units that we had previously asked to be identified as surplus units. They are identified on the uh, information that we provided for the surplus property as numbers 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we would like those units removed from the surplus property list. They wanted a little more flexibility at that school, and we don't have a problem granting it at this time. So the total is no longer 49? It would be 45, that's correct. Okay. With those four removed from the original list. I make a motion to approve the surplus of 45 mobile units over a couple phases. 
do you need a second? Did this come out of? Oh, it was changed from what was yeah, approved. Yeah, so it was altered, so we will need a second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And now we need to go back and discuss the Piedmont High School. That was on oh, consent. That, okay. That's what I made the same mistake. That was on consent under B, so okay. we're good. Okay, so it's not one more. Okay, gotcha. Okay, now we will have the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's it's good, to, bittersweet, I guess, but a lot of, as a parent, I'll say it's good to say three days left um, in the school year. It's unbelievable. This year has gone by very quickly. Um, our year-round students finish the year on May 25th, and our students on the traditional calendar, calendar will wrap up on this Friday. This has been a very, very exciting year filled with many accomplishments. And on behalf of our team, I want to say a big thank you to our teachers, our administrators, our support staff, um, and to this board for the dedication and commitment to strengthening teaching and learning in our school system. We hope that all of our employees take the time during the summer to relax, spend time with family, um, rest and get prepared for the fall of 2018 because it will be here very quickly. We also want to say congratulations to the class of 2018. Um, this is a, an amazing group of graduates that are about to walk down the stage or across the stage this weekend and on Monday. Uh, best wishes to each of our seniors uh, and to every one of you as you transition to life after high school. Um, several schools have already completed their end of year programs. But again, as a reminder, our graduations will take place on Saturday and Monday. Um, and again, congratulations to our graduates and to their families. I'm very excited to announce that another idea is coming to life to support literacy in UCPS. Uh, next Thursday, we will unveil our new UCPS mobile book bus. This is a library on wheels uh, that will serve our community this summer and provide elementary age students with books to help prevent the summer slide. Uh, many community partners have come together on this, uh, including the students here at CADA and at Forest Hills who did a major, major work on engineering. Um, we will have an unveiling event next Thursday. The board obviously is invited, the community. Um, it will be at Benton Heights Elementary on Thursday. And uh, we're excited about unveiling the bus to go around in our communities during the, during the summer. Um, we learned today that former UCPS principal Rita Webb passed away. Um, Rita worked in our district for 33 years, most recently as the interim principal at Walter Bickett. Um, we want to send our thoughts and prayers to the Webb family and to all that knew her uh, and board. Whenever we receive more information and details, we'll pass that along to you. And finally, um, on a, a bittersweet news, um, many of you have already heard that Dr. John Jones has accepted a position with Rock Hill Schools as their Chief Academic and Accountability Officer. Dr. Jones has been a huge part of UCPS for many years, and we are appreciative of his dedication to the community. John, we will miss you. Uh, we wish you the best in your new position, and we want to thank you for your tremendous leadership and dedication to our students. And I'd like to ask everyone that's here to join me in giving Dr. Jones a standing ovation and say thank you. We are planning a little celebration for you. Um, that will be coming up soon, and board, whenever that is scheduled, we'll, um, we'll share that with you all. Um, board members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have the strategic plan update with theme B, initiative 1B, with Dr. Faust and Dr. Breedlove. Good evening. Uh, thank you for allowing me to give you an update on the strategic plan. It was uh, nice to hear in the report for Advanced Ed uh, that one of the areas for improvement was opportunities for students. And that's uh, exactly what I will be going over with you uh, this evening. Strategic theme B was uh, has been um, part of our strategic plan, enhancing academic programs to meet the needs of all students. As you recall, last uh, month, my teammate, Ms. McKinnon, uh, spoke to you about strategic initiative 1A. 
dealing with instructional leadership capacity in our district and increasing that. Uh, 1B deals with our students in schools, more at that local level, uh, at that grassroots level. Um, and that's what we kind of want to look at as far as uh, our strategic initiative 1B and kind of the update and where we are and where we want to be. Well, currently, uh, in our current state, we're going to look at three, we looked at three areas, our current communications and opportunities, uh, learning environments that we have, and our services and tools in guiding our students. When we looked at our communication of uh, our opportunities that we have for our students, it's quite extensive. We do a lot of communication about all the opportunities that our school system has available to students. We do this through our district website, our individual school websites. Uh, we do this at the local uh, school level inside with face-to-face -face, uh, with our students and with our families at, at curriculum nights. We do this in printed format with our program of studies. Uh, we do this with our student handbooks and, of course, social media and all other aspects of communication that we have used, including Connect Ed, uh, as examples. When we look at the learning environments, we also have an abundance of learning environments that we really don't want until you think about it, how many that we have. Yes, we have the main core, which is our face-to-face -face instruction inside of our brick-and-mortar buildings uh, that we utilize. We also have the blended environment. Uh, that students such as students that take UCV where they take, yes, they take online courses, but we have teachers that go and help instruct those students in a face-to-face -face format. We also have fully online courses such as North Carolina virtual public schools. And then uh, finally our internships, our hands-on uh, programs that we have that get students to get, let them get their hands dirty on the work, so to speak. And then uh, the current state when it comes to the services and tools and guiding our students along the pathways that they choose. There are so many of those that we would be here all night, probably into the morning if we listed every one of those. But we do a lot of things both globally, such as Read for You and helping out uh, in our elementary schools, all the way through math tutors in fourth grade and beyond, AIG, EC uh, services, uh, EL programs that we offer, PSAT 8 and 10 to help us uh, with identifying our students and their needs as they progress in, in programs. Purchasing the SAT for all of our uh, 11th grade students. These are some of the examples of many things that we do as a, as a system that are services and tools that we provide our students. When we look at the desired state of where we want to go, we did this through 12 uh, performance indicators, and those indicators can be categorized as either, either an elementary, a secondary, or a K-12 to indicator. In 2017-18, we had five performance indicators uh, that we started uh, this school year. Uh, as you can see on the slide, you have three columns, the performance indicator, the measurement method, and the target for achievement. When we look at the first one, we see that we were uh, we are providing career and academic awareness um, training to school staff. Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. And that's exactly what this is, because we want to know where our students, we like to know where our students want to end up, what are their goals, and we train our teachers and staff to help our students along whatever pathway that they choose. And that takes a lot of training. We did that this year, such as Naviance, training that we've worked with our school administration, our counselors, uh, we've worked with our teachers and even parents of understanding, okay, what is Naviance and what are some of the uh, features that Naviance brings? We will continue to do that under Jessica Garner and uh, working with our families and each year that we will adopt more and more with that. We'll also continue other uh, trainings as well. Secondly, increase the number of uh, identified AIG students and underrepresented subgroups throughout our, our school system and in our schools. Uh, we are always uh, looking to target um, talent development in our school system across all domains. And that is one area that the team felt that we would continue to focus. And that will always be a goal for us. too far, sorry. Sorry about that, I'm trying to get it to. 
it just jumps. There we go. All right, expanding 50-50 two-way uh, dual language programs among schools with high EL populations. We are often running in that with that uh, in that respect, uh, such as, for example, Marshville next year, 2018-19, will be one of our schools that will become a 50-50 dual language school, and that's very exciting. We will continue uh, to progress in that manner. Uh, fourthly, creation of a K-12 dual language immersion pathway. Not only have we started this, but we've also completed this. It's nice to have a document that lists where are students that are leaving these dual language programs in the elementary level, what is this, what does their pathway look like at the middle school level and beyond into high school? Sitting down with a parent of a kindergartner who is the parent is pondering putting them in the dual language program and having that document. This is what uh, is laid out for you. This is where your child will end up by the time they uh, finish the program in high school and what is available to him or her. Investigating and working to expand opportunities for access and enrollment in advanced academic uh, programming. Uh, we continue uh, to, to develop this and expand these opportunities for our students, such as in, in the, this past school year, making sure that at least at all of our traditional schools, that we are offering at least 10 AP courses at all of those schools so that all students have access to upper level curriculum. And we will uh, continue to monitor that and push that that is made available. When we move into the 2018-19 uh, school year, we're looking at performance indicator of identifying cross-sectional team to create an annual opportunities needs assessment as well as implementing that uh, needs assessment uh, each year, knowing where our students want to go and what their interests are. Uh, and having that assessment, that will drive what opportunities that we offer year after year based on the novel idea of understand what our students want and, and what their interests are. Performance indicator, providing ongoing school-wide student academic and career exploration counseling uh, activities. Uh, this is, um, we decided that at every school, they must offer at least four school-wide career exploration activities per year. That's a minimum. Schools can go beyond that and many schools will and that's the expectation, but they should have at least four school-wide activities per year. Also, the creation and implementation of an interactive UCPS program of studies. This is where it gets really exciting because imagine our program of studies coming alive, uh, being able to click on a link for welding and, and seeing uh, Mr. Churchill over at Monroe High School working with his students and sparks flying where he steps back and he explains what the class is all about and what students are able to do and how many uh, we have employers lined up at the door hiring our students to work for them when they get these certifications that's what parents need to know and that's what parents want to see and that's what students want to see if i sign up for that class what is an ap biology what is that all about what are we doing and having the teacher and students in where it comes alive that's uh sorry miss stalbert that's a lot of work for you uh, on one end, but it is an exciting uh, it is an exciting element that we will look at. And then lastly, a postgraduate survey to improve K-12 programming. How are our programs working for students two, three, five, seven, ten years down the road? Are we uh, teaching and doing the right things? Are students that go off to college, uh, are they successful? And how do we know? And this is offering them a survey to give us back information about how the K-12 system in Union County Public Schools prepared them for beyond their compulsory education. And are, they, are their interests still the same and did we do uh, a good job with them? And so this would be great feedback for us. So at this time, uh, you have this handout. Um, as you can see, Initiative 1B is all about providing uh, students with access to opportunities, and that's all students in our school system. Uh, those that 
that maybe don't have advocates and making sure that we're doing our job to make sure that the, there is equity across the board in, in all opportunities. So uh, at this time, I, I do appreciate you giving me the, me the opportunity to uh, present to you Strategic Initiative 1B, and I'm happy to answer any, answer any questions that you have at this time. I have some a question, and I think this would best be answered by Dr. Faust. I've had several community leaders in the last 10 days approach me about discipline in the schools. One individual said his granddaughter was not able to learn because of the constant discipline problems in her class. And she, this is a high achieving girl. Uh, the bullying situation is still going on. Now I'm very proud of Union County Public Schools and we are doing a great job but without discipline, a strategic plan will not work. When I went to school and when I taught, discipline, it was ironclad and children knew if they did this, this would happen. And, and during the years I taught was, they told us we will not let one child interfere with the rest of the class's ability to learn. And I don't know what has happened, but I get calls from teachers. And I know when you hear me say I get calls from teachers, the multi, you remember the meeting that you had at Weddington that I wasn't able to attend with the PAC chairman? I was on that committee for seven years. The last four years, I was the chairman of it. And I have a lot of friends that still teach. And, and they just, they're begging for some help when they have disruption. If we had, if we had discipline, they feel like there wouldn't be no need to use it because the children would know there's consequences. And so all I can say is a strategic plan is no greater than the foundation it's built on. And our foundation has turned from rock, I'm afraid, to sand due to the discipline in some of these schools. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All very right. Much. Thank you very much. That brings us to resolution for interim appropriations for fis fiscal year 2018 and 19. Mr. Covington. Good evening. The item before you is, is what's required by state statute for us to continue operating the school system until we get our budget adopted for the 18-19 school year. Can we get a copy of that? I don't know. I don't have anything. I have our budget amendments that were on. <clears throat> what, is that what you're talking about? No, I'm sorry. I thought it was distributed. No. What is it? Is it a resolution? Yes. Oh. I don't have it. You we have a resolution. That's Lenovo. No. You know, Mr. Gove, I believe you sent it to me. Yeah. Was it not sent to the full board? No. Okay. 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 Yeah. We can. We can I'll pull it up and, we, and we read it back to you. Pull it up and you can take a look at it, or we can table yes. it because I think that we're going to have Miss Merrill. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, potentially another board member, a board meeting this month that we're mm -hmm. looking at. Mm -hmm. So if we could bring it back prior to, to yes. July 1. Yes, we need to we just have it there. approved prior to okay. July 1. I guess I have a question it, that's kind of, there's a resolution on here for Lenovo. Are we supposed to be adopting this tonight? We no, ma'am. That have... resolution is going over to the Board of County Commissioners. They have to approve it first, and then we will bring the Board of Air resolution to you after the county approves their resolution. It's for the 612 grade lease for Lenovo. You, we approved them, but we didn't approve the resolution. Correct. You, you have to formally approve the resolution, but the resolution has to be approved first by the Board of County Commissioners before the Board of Ed can approve resolution. the resolution. Okay. okay. We can, I would recommend that we put this on the June, the, the next board meeting in June. Um, as long as we get it approved by July 1. Then I'll offer a motion we table until the next meeting. Table, I'm, I'm tabling which resolution? 
the resolution for the interim appropriations yes. since the board did not get it. Okay. And if you could please send that out tomorrow. first. Yes, ma'am. First thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we will table that. Um, board, I have had a request to take like a three to five minute um, bathroom break. Um, so let's, let's shoot for three minutes and try to um, be back in here real quick, okay?
um, move to a finance committee update. I will turn it over to Mr. Sides. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, just to give you an update on the budget process. Of course, our budget was submitted early part of May to the county. On May 11, the uh, last county work session where the county staff offered a proposed direction for the uh, commissioners kind of set the tone of where they're going. And in that meeting, the county manager proposed, including as a revenue source for the next fiscal year, all of our fund balance, including a utility refund from the city of Monroe and all anticipated uh, liquor and fine forfeiture income uh, that we uh, project for next year. Now, we started off and we have been totally transparent in the fund balance. 5.7 million. And the finance committee deliberated about what would be an appropriate amount. And the decision was made because of the bond projects approved by the voters in 2016, it would be only prudent to wait and make a decision about a, uh, a more permanent formula for a fund balance until those projects have been bid and we can estimate or have a better handle on the actual cost of the projects. The, the cost estimates that we're working from now were developed under the previous administration and the previous leadership of the facilities department. And as you know, things have changed since then. The economy continues to improve and there is more and more competition, more and more construction projects of which uh, the contracting community has an opportunity to bid. And uh, private projects such as ours are not always as desirable as, as private projects. So you find less people bidding and the costs continue to escalate. We approached the county with this idea to wait. Do not include these funds for the next physical year until we have an understanding of what actually these projects would cost. Now, I am concerned, and it's just myself, that if the county continues this course of action, potentially all of these projects could be affected and or potentially eliminated. Now, the county manager in this meeting made the comment that the county is the backdrop for the school system, that uh, even in some cases, it may not be legal to have a fund balance, and that a funding request from the Board of Education has never been denied. Well, most recently, one item comes to mind. We had approached the county about the opportunity to advance some of the true up money that we were going to receive as a result of increased county revenues so that we could apply those to projects, the projects at Indian Trail Elementary School, the chillers and the ventilation, which are time sensitive. You want to do those projects while the kids are out of school. But if the, continue, the, the current course of action, those funds would not be committed until July 1st, and so we couldn't expedite the project. We approached the county on, on that idea, and frankly, we were rebuffed. So uh, those comments, um, you know, we'll, we'll just leave it there. I uh, also am concerned that the uh, comments made by the manager on our request for social and emotional learning resources of $1.6 million dollars which are funds for counselors, mental health therapists, social workers, and our countywide system of visitor check-in for school safety. Ms. Cotto mentioned reaching out to the board, which I, I think she uh, misspoke because I, to my knowledge, she didn't reach out to me or any of the individual board members, but did, uh, I understand, reach out to staff to discuss this, have meetings, in her, in her words, to feel more comfortable with this issue and mentioned that she met with our staff on two occasions. And uh, I would like to ask Dr. Houlihan if he could address the results of those meetings and where things stand. 
So again, this goes back to if the board will remember the joint meeting between the two boards when we were I was asked, can we work with the county staff on a plan um, to look at how to address some of these needs in a, in a partnership effort? As a result of that discussion, um, I met with county staff. There was another subsequent meeting following that to get into the details with many of several of our um, social workers and others. And as a result of that outcome, we have come together on consensus on current ways we are partnering with the county on this issue of social, emotional, and mental health, as well as new possible ways we could partner um, in the future. And, and that's kind of where we are. We were we we started those discussions. I felt very strongly about this idea of, of the, a more true partnership. However, I will still say that I'm going to continue to advocate for these funds being appropriated to our school system because of the nature of differences between, as an example, a Department of Health and Human Services social worker versus a school social worker. And the alignment of resources to get to kids when they need them immediately versus having to, to go through a county um, requesting process. So I'm gonna stand firm on that. That's my opinion. That's what I believe would be best for the system. Um, as opposed to that funding going to uh, another county agency. But we are making progress with the county on these, this idea of how do you partner better. Um, if you want details, I can send the board an email with details on what that means. Um, but we have had good discussions with them. And, and I would add that this program is not new. This is in fact, in my thought process anyway, an actual extension of funds and resources that were approved not only by this board, but the county last year, directed at our six most challenged schools. This is not adding overhead or adding uh, additional uh, staff to the central office, which is always the, the bugaboo. These are, these are boots on the ground. This is feedback from teachers and principals in their building saying, this is, has been a valuable resource it has helped us. So we are looking for the first phase of expanding this program. And I call on the Board of County Commissioners to not encumber this funding as the county manager has proposed, but to release the funds so that we can hire the folks, get them trained, and get them in the schools where they're needed for the next school year rather than meeting this thing to death. Now, the next meeting, uh, formal, there will be a formal hearing of the county commissioners on June 11th at 7 p.m. And I would encourage uh, members of the board and members of the community that have concerns about funding for next year's school budget to make plans to attend or watch on the county channel. Madam Chairman, that's uh, basically my report. Madam Chairman, I have I have been in contact with the commissioners. Uh, yet two days ago, no, last Friday, Commissioner Simpson said if if we needed to have a joint meeting and if we're going to have that June twenty sixth meeting, that would be a perfect time. We don't need to be negotiating from one public meeting to another. I I think. From what I've been told by four commissioners, we're going to get everything we want. But it's on. We're going to get everything that we've asked for, but we can't. We we need to just keep reminding them that they 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 need to do what they told us to do. Uh, I've had very good conversations with Commissioner Rushing. Commissioner Helms, Commissioner Simpson. I have not talked to Commissioner Harrison, but Mr. Russian and Mr. Helms have. I think this is very, it's, I, I think it's 90% done. And as far as if, if you see fit to have a joint meeting, I think we need to have. I don't know why they made that, why the manager brought that to them, but 
they realize that us nine and their five are responsible for running the county, school board and county. That's what they're going to do. And they've all told me, we're not going to shortchange it. So I don't want to build walls when there's no use to build walls. They're going to need our needs. Just need to sit down and just walk them through it one more time. Okay. And just so that we're all on the same page, um, I've, I've heard people on the county side, uh, commissioners and the county manager also say that they're going to fully fund our request, except they want us to fund it with our fund balance. So, um, so they want to take the five, you know, the money that we have in our fund balance plus the money that we have received from Monroe City and they want and they want us to use that to fund our budget um, so that we no longer have a fund balance. So I think that's the when play on that words that we need to I call them up and they they're adamant. No, that's not what they're okay. gonna do. This is the county manager talking, not the commission. Okay, great. Okay, well thank you for having that conversation with some of the commissioners. I mean, I, I encourage everyone, you know, to, you know, pick up the phone and give and them a I call. I have been assured and, it will not be voted on. It will be on information mm -hmm. only. It's a public hearing, okay. right. The 11th, but then the next meeting will be when it will be an action vote. Okay. And, uh, okay. Well, thank you for that update. Let me, let me just reiterate. We have been open ever from the very beginning about the fund balance. Now, it is a legitimate question to see what the, what the proper formula is for an uh, ongoing fund balance. But as we tried to explain in our last joint meeting that we had with the county, we have right now the, the number is 54 million in capital projects. Anyone that's familiar with industry knows that construction costs are escalating. It's, it's part of uh, uh, what happens in a healthy and growing economy. All we're asking is to wait and allow us to retain those funds to see what would be utilized in order to make these projects happen as planned. That's all we're asking for. We're not asking to stash the money away for now, for where, whenever. This is a, this particular year when we are actually going to start, hope to start moving dirt on these projects that the voters overwhelmingly approved in 2016. There are variables that we have to be conservative in holding some funds to be able to complete those projects. That's what we've been trying to get across from day one. And that's what we continue to advocate for regarding these projects. That's all we're saying. They understand that, Mr. Stiles, and that's what I'd say. That's why we should have a joint meeting so that everybody knows we're all on the same page. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that update, Mr. Sides and <coughs> Mr. Rape. We will now have the facilities committee update with Mrs. Hindhill. Thank you. Speaking of bo uh, bond projects, we have bid out Western Union, Piedmont High School, and Monroe High School. So those projects will be starting in the near future, if not already. Um, with respect to Porter Ridge High School and Middle School, we're about ready to go out for bid. Sun Valley High School is out to bid. And the transportation facility, we are still waiting on water and sewer. We have had some good conversations this week with the uh, Commissioner Simpson about uh, Union County sewer in at the transportation center. We continue to talk to the city of Monroe. So that's the update with respect to that. With respect to transfer appeals, op they're now open online through Scribbles through June 17th. There's 11 reasons enumerated for transfers. It includes the new sibling policy and children of employees. So get your transfer requests in by the 17th. Thanks. And I think that's it. Everything else was on our agenda. This hotel is always very gracious. I have been promised that we'll have a memorandum of understanding Monday night. Because we 
for the field while well, they have talked about it. And that would give us more money to perform this. But I know it ain't a pile until it's finished. Okay. Thank you. We will now move to policies for review with Mrs. Morris. Good evening. Um, I will try and move through this quickly. Um, under policies for review, you have policy 4-6 and policy 412. Those will be, those went to the policy committee. They'll come back to you again for approval next month. Um, and then the administrative guidelines are there just um, for your review as well. Those two will not come back next month. Any questions? Okay, I'll move to policies for approval. Uh, I'm going to care. I'm going to separate these into a couple groups. The chapter one policies, which is A through F, those came back before you previously for review, and they've gone to the policy committee. I've received no requests for uh, amendment or uh, revision um, uh, since that time. Are there any questions for any of the ones from chapter one? Do you want us to vote on chapter one now or wait till the end? You can do it. It probably would be better because I'm going to kind of chunk them because there's some different okay. situations. So um, board members, this uh, did come out of policy. So I don't think we need a um, second. Correct. So um, you want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve. You want me to read them all off? Policy 1-4, um, 1-5, 1-10, 1-18, 1-28, 1-29, 1-30, 1-31, 1-32, 1-33, 1-34, 1-35, 1-36, 1-37, 1-38, 1-39, 1-40, 1-41, 1-42, 1-43, 1-44, 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all those opposed? Okay, the bids pass. Now we will have the personnel agenda addendum that was provided um, in closed session. I make a motion to approve the personnel agenda addendum Thank from closed you. session. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, so six three. Motion passes. Okay, we will now move to board comments. Okay, I, um, first off, I would like to um, say a very special thank you to Dr. John Jones for um, 25 years plus years of service to Union County Public Schools. Um, just speaking for myself, it has been um, an honor and a privilege to know you, work with you, and call you a friend. And, um, and you will be very, very missed. And in the spirit of um, Team UCPS, I will say you have been our v M MVP. Those, that's my opinion. And, um, and I, it has just been a true pleasure to know you and work with you. And, um, and we wish you the very, very best in your new endeavor. Hey, I'll make a comment. Absolutely. Um, my parents are watching, oh. and they <laughs> they taught me that you make sure you say thank you. And I need to thank you for being a part of my journey. Um, at the end of the day, this Board of Education have been working in central services for nine years now. Oh. And you certainly ask your questions. You certainly inspect what you expect. But you allow created creativity and great things to happen for this school system. And I appreciate the fact that you say thank you and that you supported me as well as our team's work. Andrew Houlihan, thank you. Um, you came two years ago and you brought new ideas and you said we could be better. And I thank you for stretching me because I believe when you're stretched, you grow and you build upon that. And I thank you for what you've taught, uh, taught me. I wanna thank the team that I work with I want to thank the cabinet members, as well as those who work those 16, 17 hour days and come back the next day to do it again, as well as the team in my department and the team uh, in my office, Kay Rowland, all who work together to make great things that will continue. Two other groups I need to thank. There are teachers along the way that made me a great principal and made me I would say great at times. Certainly there were days that were not the best, but I look at the great experience I had because there were teachers that supported me. And for those teachers, I'm very grateful. And then there's one person, um, 30 years ago, I was flipping burgers at a KOA in Myrtle Beach and couldn't find a teaching job because they were harder to find then. And I got a call from Frances Davis. If you don't know who Frances Davis is, she was the principal of Wesley Chapel Elementary School for many years. And she said, I've got an opening. Will you come and interview? All I had was a green sport coat, but I put it on and I went. And when I greeted her at the door, she said, nice to meet you. Wow, isn't that a green sport coat? <laughs> and I came in and interviewed with Miss Davis and was given a fourth grade teaching position 31 years ago. And at that point, I fell in love with this school system. And she said, whatever you do, you make the, you make the school and you do what it is to make the system proud. Uh, Ms. Davis, I hope Mr. Jones made you proud, but I've remembered that all along because the character in this school system matters so, so very much. I used to say the journey, certainly you have to remember the end, but in the end, it's the journey that matters, and thank you for making mine so very rich. God bless every one of you, and thank you again. You are the epitome of a good man. Yes, sir. 
Amen. Uh, the time I work with you is greater than two. We, we accomplish a lot. Thank you. I wish I could be more like you. Dr. Jones. Oh, this is not protocol. But it's okay. <laughs> because this is just the moment that we have in, in, in time. Uh, I would like to say something yeah. in behalf of Dr. Jones. <laughs> Dr. Jones, you are the epitome of professionalism. <laughs> As a community, <coughs> as a district itself, because born and raised here, been involved with this school system ever since the early 80s. Dr. Jones, you bring to education something that we never knew before. You are so loved throughout the community. I have never met a parent, a, a, a guardian, no matter what race that they are, they say, you are a good man. Thank you, you so much for your comments. We're going to continue with board comments at this time. Thank you. Dr. Jones, I'm, I want to say thank you. And I know everybody's going to get mad at me, but that's okay. But I always said that you were my favorite. <laughs> I mean, I love you all were all like the, the, the like close second. But I always said I just love you and I love you still. And every question that I needed answered, you knew the answer to everything so y'all better get to knowing everything because i ask a lot of questions and he knows everything and he does it with a smile and he's just whatever you need and to this day it's been four years and he still won't call me leslie so maybe now <laughs> that i'm not will you call me leslie not miss boyd so thank you i think um I heard you say how much you love the school district. And as you go on to your next, your next accomplishments, which I know will be many, just know how much the school district loves you. Well, um, Dr. Jones, I have one regret with you leaving. I never did get to hear you do your gospel singing. Y'all don't know, but Dr. Jones was in a court quintet, yes. quartet, very, the sea's turning red. I'm going to, a very accomplished gospel singer. I think we have a party. We, um, yeah, there we go. Schedule, we can try so to set we, that up for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we, we will have music. We will have music. And we're going to record that and put it on our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for all your service. And you do know. I have an office in Rock Hill, and I may just be dropping in on to make sure they're taking good care of you one day. But anyway, I'm, I know at the Sides House, we just finished EOG, so I want to wish everyone, I hope they had a great, uh, your children had a great EOG, and we're still into EOCs. And before you know it, here we are, another school year under our belt. So I hope everyone has an enjoyable and um, wonderful summer, and uh, August will be here before we know it, and we'll crank it up again. Okay, I did want to um, send Miss Rita Webb's family um, our condolences. Um, another honor and a privilege in serving on this board is to um, to know someone as great as Rita Webb, who also served and loved our school district with all of her heart up until maybe even a month ago at Walter Bickett. Um, just an absolutely incredible educator and how blessed are we that we had someone like Rita Webb that would continue to come out of retirement every time we had a need. Um, she was more than willing to come back to Union County Public Schools and serve us in any way until her very last days. And so I just want to um, tell the Webb family how much we tre treasure um, Rita and how much she will be missed and um, and we love her and thank her for her service and um, her un unwavering support um, in serving us in any possible way at any moment. She was always there for us. Um, I want to say a very special thank you um, to our legislators in Raleigh who at a moment's notice um, came to Weddington High School on May 14th to meet with our board. Um, I want to say a thank you to Senator Tommy Tucker, Representative Dean Arp, who served as the board chair for 12 years. He was um, he dropped everything on his calendar to be here that night. 
um, Representative Craig Horn and Representative Mark Brody. And I wanna say a very special thank you also to Ms. Linda Davis, who was here with us tonight from the Union County NCAE from Marshville Elementary, who helped um, put together all the talking points for a very healthy discussion that night between um, teacher concerns, our board, and our state legislators. Linda did a great job. And Mr. Harvey Bagshaw from Stallings Elementary, those two did a really great job representing our teachers and um, sitting, joining us on the stage with our state representatives. Um, I wish all of our high school students, um, we have two more days of exams. They have two days under their belt. We've got two more days to go in final exams in all of our high schools, except early college. And I wanna say congratulations in advance to the class of 2018. For, um, for all of their hard work and dedication and graduating with many, many honors and many, many millions of dollars in scholarships earned by our high school graduates. And with that, I have no more comments board. Okay. Are there any announcements? Um, I believe we have policy on June 20th. No, okay. Um, facilities, we will have June 26th at 5.30, followed by a Board of Education meeting on June 26th, the same day at six o'clock. Many of you um, will be able to call in. Um, so you'll, that is your choice to call in on that day. Um, go ahead and please um, mark July 10th as another, uh, as our next Board of Education meeting at six o'clock. Um, we will keep that a light schedule for the month of July, and um, you may also decide to call in for that one. And I believe our next curriculum meeting will be um, July 26 at 9 a.m., and those are all of the announcements that I have. Anyone else? Okay. And we are ready to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, board.